In vector calculus, and more generally differential geometry, Stokes' theorem sometimes spelled Stokes's theorem, and also called the generalized Stokes' theorem or the Stokes-Carton theorem is a statement about the integration of differential forms on manifolds, which both simplifies and generalizes several theorems from vector calculus. Stokes' theorem says that the integral of a differential form ω over the boundary of some orientable manifold ω is equal to the integral of its exterior derivative d ω over the whole of ω, i.e. ω omega omega equals ω d ω Display style int underscore partial omega omega equals int underscore omega d omega. Stokes' theorem was formulated in its modern form by Elie Carton in 1945, following earlier work on the generalization of the theorems of vector calculus by Vito Volterra, Eduard Gorzat, and Henri Poincaré. This modern form of Stokes' theorem is a vast generalization of a classical result that Lord Kelvin communicated to George Stokes in a letter dated July 2, 1850. Stokes set the theorem as a question on the 1854 Smith's Prize exam, which led to the result bearing his name. It was first published by Hermann Henkel in 1861. This classical Kelvin Stokes theorem relates the surface integral of the curl of a vector field F over a surface in Euclidean 3 space to the line integral of the vector field over its boundary. Let γ, A, B, R2 be a piecewise smooth Jordan plane curve. The Jordan curve theorem implies that γ divides R2 into two components, a compact one and another that is non compact. Let D denote the compact part that is bounded by γ and suppose ψ, dr3 is smooth, with S. ψ D. If γ is the space curve defined by γ T. Psi gamma t and f as a smooth vector field on R three, then gamma f d gamma equals s times f d s. Display style oint underscore gamma math bf f c d o t d math bf gamma equals i i n t underscore s nabla times math bf f c d o t d math bf s this classical statement, along with the classical divergence theorem, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and Green's theorem are simply special cases of the general formulation stated above. <laughs> Introduction The fundamental theorem of calculus states that the integral of a function f over the interval a, b can be calculated by finding an antiderivative f of f a b f x d x equals f b minus f a display style int underscore l caret b f x d x equals f b f a. Stokes' theorem is a vast generalization of this theorem in the following sense: by the choice of f d f d x. Topic f x. In the parlance of differential forms, this is saying that f x dx is the exterior derivative of the zero form, i.e. function, f, in other words, that df 
FDX. The general Stokes theorem applies to higher differential forms omega instead of just zero forms such as f. A closed interval a, b, is a simple example of a one-dimensional manifold with boundary. Its boundary is the set consisting of the two points a and b. Integrating f over the interval may be generalized to integrating forms on a higher dimensional manifold. Two technical conditions are needed, the manifold has to be orientable, and the form has to be compactly supported in order to give a well-defined integral. The two points A and B form the boundary of the closed interval. More generally, Stokes' theorem applies to oriented manifolds M with boundary. The boundary M of M is itself a manifold and inherits a natural orientation from that of M. For example, the natural orientation of the interval gives an orientation of the two boundary points. Intuitively, A inherits the opposite orientation as B, as they are at opposite ends of the interval. So, integrating f over two boundary points A, B is taking the difference f B minus f A. In even simpler terms, one can consider the points as boundaries of curves, that is, as zero-dimensional boundaries of one-dimensional manifolds. So, just as one can find the value of an integral f dx equals df over a one-dimensional manifold a, b, by considering the antiderivative f at the zero-dimensional boundaries a, b, one can generalize the fundamental theorem of calculus, with a few additional caveats, to deal with the value of integrals d omega over n-dimensional manifolds omega by considering the antiderivative omega at the n minus 1 dimensional boundaries omega of the manifold so the fundamental theorem reads a b f x d x equals a b d f equals a minus b plus f equals f b minus f a Display style int underscore a b f x dx equals int underscore a b df equals int underscore a carrot cup b carrot plus f equals f b f a. Topic formulation for smooth manifolds with boundary. Let omega be an oriented smooth manifold with boundary of dimension n and let alpha be a smooth n differential form that is compactly supported on omega. First, suppose that alpha is compactly supported in the domain of a single oriented coordinate chart u phi. In this case, we define the integral of alpha over omega as omega alpha equals phi u phi minus 1 alpha display style int underscore omega alpha equals int underscore bar phi u left bar phi caret minus 1 right caret asterisk alpha ie via the pullback of alpha to rn more generally, the integral of alpha over omega is defined as follows: Let psi i be a partition of unity associated with a locally finite cover Ui, phi i of consistently oriented coordinate charts. Then define the integral omega alpha i u i psi 
I alpha display style int underscore omega alpha equiv sum underscore I int underscore u underscore I psi underscore I alpha where each term in the sum is evaluated by pulling back to Rn as described above. This quantity is well defined, that is, it does not depend on the choice of the coordinate charts, nor the partition of unity. The generalized Stokes theorem reads conventionally omega i omega text style int underscore partial omega i caret asterisk omega is abbreviated as omega omega text style int underscore partial omega omega since the pullback of a differential form by the inclusion map is simply its restriction to its domain i omega equals omega omega display style i caret asterisk omega equals omega underscore partial omega here d display style d is the exterior derivative which is defined using the manifold structure only the right hand side is sometimes written as Omega, omega. Text style oint underscore partial omega omega. To stress the fact that the n minus one display style n one manifold omega display style partial omega has no boundary. This fact is also an implication of Stokes' theorem, since for a given smooth n display style n dimensional manifold omega display style omega application of the theorem twice gives omega omega equals omega D D Omega equals zero text style int underscore partial partial Omega Omega equals int underscore Omega D D Omega equals zero for any N minus two display style N two form omega display style omega which implies that omega equals display style partial partial omega equals empty set the right hand side of the equation is often used to formulate integral laws the left hand side then leads to equivalent differential formulations see below the theorem is often used in situations where omega display style omega is an embedded oriented submanifold of some bigger manifold often r k display style math bf r caret k on which the form omega display style omega is defined topic topological preliminaries integration over chains let m be a smooth manifold 
A smooth singular K simplex in M is defined as a smooth map from the standard simplex in R K to M. The group C K M Z of singular K chains on M is defined to be the free abelian group on the set of singular K simplices in M. These groups, together with the boundary map, define a chain complex. The corresponding homology resp cohomology group is isomorphic to the usual singular homology group H K M Z resp the singular cohomology group H K M Z defined using continuous rather than smooth simplices in M. On the other hand, the differential forms with exterior derivative d as the connecting map form a cochain complex, which defines the de Rham cohomology groups H K D R M R. Differential K forms can be integrated over a K simplex in a natural way by pulling back to R K. Extending by linearity allows one to integrate over chains. This gives a linear map from the space of K forms to the KTH group of singular cochains, C K M, Z, the linear functionals on C K M, Z. In other words, a K form ω defines a functional I ω C equals C omega display style i omega C equals oint underscore C omega on the K chains Stokes theorem says that this is a chain map from de Rham cohomology to singular cohomology with real coefficients the exterior derivative D behaves like the dual of on forms this gives a homomorphism from de Rham cohomology to singular cohomology. On the level of forms, this means closed forms, i.e., d omega equals zero, have zero integral over boundaries, i.e., over manifolds that can be written as cmic, and exact forms, i.e., omega. Topic D sigma have zero integral over cycles, i.e., if the boundaries sum up to the empty set, C mic. De Ram's theorem shows that this homomorphism is in fact an isomorphism. So the converse to one and two above hold true. In other words, if C are cycles generating the KTH homology group, then for any corresponding real numbers, I, there exists a closed form, omega, such that C I omega equals A I Display style oint underscore c underscore i omega equals a underscore i, and this form is unique up to exact forms. Stokes' theorem on smooth manifolds can be derived from Stokes' theorem for chains in smooth manifolds, and vice versa. Formally stated, the latter reads. Topic. Underlying principle To simplify these topological arguments, it is worthwhile to examine the underlying principle by considering an example for d. equals two dimensions. The essential idea can be understood by the diagram on the left, which shows that, in an oriented tiling of a manifold, the interior paths are traversed in opposite directions, their contributions to the path integral thus cancel each other pairwise. As a consequence, only the contribution from the boundary remains. It thus suffices to prove Stokes' theorem for sufficiently fine tilings or, equivalently, simplices, which usually is not difficult. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Topic generalization to rough sets equals the formulation above, in which omega is a smooth manifold with boundary, does not suffice in many applications. For example, if the domain of integration is defined as the plane region between two x-coordinates and the graphs of two functions, it will often happen that the domain has corners. In such a case, the corner points mean that ω is not a smooth manifold with boundary, and so the statement of Stokes' theorem given above does not apply. Nevertheless, it is possible to check that the conclusion of Stokes' theorem is still true. This is because ω and its boundary are well behaved away from a small set of points a measure zero set. A version of Stokes' theorem that extends to rough domains was proved by Whitney. Assume that D is a connected bounded open subset of Rn. Call D a standard domain if it satisfies the following property, there exists a subset P of D, open in D, whose complement in D has Hausdorff n measure 0, and such that every point of P has a generalized normal vector. This is a vector v x such that, if a coordinate system is chosen so that v x is the first basis vector, then, in an open neighborhood around x, there exists a smooth function f x2, xn such that p is the graph x1 equals f x2, xn and d is the region x1 p omega equals d d omega display style int underscore p omega equals int underscore underscore d d omega the study of measure theoretic properties of rough sets leads to geometric measure theory even more general versions of stokes theorem have been proved by federer and by harrison topic <laughs> special cases The general form of the Stokes theorem using differential forms is more powerful and easier to use than the special cases. The traditional versions can be formulated using Cartesian coordinates without the machinery of differential geometry, and thus are more accessible. Further, they are older and their names are more familiar as a result. The traditional forms are often considered more convenient by practicing scientists and engineers but the non-naturalness of the traditional formulation becomes apparent when using other coordinate systems, even familiar ones like spherical or cylindrical coordinates. There is potential for confusion in the way names are applied, and the use of dual formulations. Topic: Kelvin-Stokes theorem. This is a dualized one plus one dimensional case for a one-form dualized because it is a statement about vector fields. This special case is often just referred to as Stokes theorem in many introductory university vector calculus courses and is used in physics and engineering. It is also sometimes known as the curl theorem. The classical Kelvin-Stokes theorem relates the surface integral of the curl of a vector field over a surface sigma in Euclidean 3 space to the line integral of the vector field over its boundary. It is a special case of the general Stokes theorem with n equals 2 once we identify a vector field with a one form using the metric on Euclidean 3 space. The curve of the line integral, sigma, must have positive orientation, meaning that sigma points counterclockwise when the surface normal, n, points toward the viewer. One consequence of the Kelvin–Stokes theorem is that the field lines of a vector field with zero curl cannot be closed contours. The formula can be rewritten as Green's theorem 
Green's theorem is immediately recognizable as the third integrand of both sides in the integral in terms of p, q, and r cited above. Topic in electromagnetism. Two of the four Maxwell equations involve curls of 3D vector fields and their differential and integral forms are related by the Kelvin–Stokes theorem. Caution must be taken to avoid cases with moving boundaries, the partial time derivatives are intended to exclude such cases. If moving boundaries are included, interchange of integration and differentiation introduces terms related to boundary motion not included in the results below see differentiation under the integral sign. The above listed subset of Maxwell's equations are valid for electromagnetic fields expressed in SI units. In other systems of units, such as CGS or Gaussian units, the scaling factors for the terms differ. For example, in Gaussian units, Faraday's law of induction and Ampere's law take the forms times E equals minus one C B T times H equals one C D T plus four pi C J. Display style begin aligned nabla times math B F E and equals F R A C one C F R A C partial math B F B partial T nabla times Math BF H and equals FRAC one C FRAC partial Math BF D partial T plus FRAC four Pi C Math BF J end aligned respectively, where C is the speed of light in vacuum. Topic Divergence theorem Likewise, the ostrogradsky gauss theorem also known as the divergence theorem or Gauss's theorem V O L F D V O L equals V O L F D sigma display style int underscore mathrm volume nabla c d o t math b f f d underscore mathrm volume equals oint underscore partial mathrm volume math b f f c d o t d bold symbol sigma is a special case if we identify a vector field with the n-1 form obtained by contracting the vector field with the Euclidean volume form. An application of this is the case f equals fc where c is an arbitrary constant vector. Working out the divergence of the product gives c v o l F D V O L equals C V O L F D Sigma Display style Math BF C C D O T int underscore Mathem volume Nabla F D underscore Mathem volume equals Math BF C C D O T oint underscore partial Mathem volume F D bold symbol Sigma Since this holds for all C we find V O L F D V O L equals V O L F D Sigma 
Display style int underscore mathem volume nabla f d underscore mathem volume equals oint underscore partial mathem volume f d bold symbol sigma. Topic. See also. Chandrasekhar Wenzel Lemma. Equals equals footnotes.